All right, so after the old vegan cyclist did his train like a pro challenge in December, where he did like three three weeks back to back of 20 hour weeks, everyone on YouTube seems to be going quite mental. I know a couple of other people have tried it and I thought I'd give my comments uh, about it and all the rest. So I think number one, the most important thing is training like a pro is, most people think just means riding as much as possible. I think that that's wrong. Like a pro trains for their races. So for instance, like female professional cyclists compared to male professional cyclists, except Anamie Van Vluten, let's say, when they do studies, generally, the females pro cyclists do less volume, but more intensity because their races are shorter, but they're all full time. While like the men, they do more volume, but normally less intensity. And if you think about it, if when you're a pro, like you have all day to train, right? But they don't do a hundred hours a week. Like there's a, there's a max. So I think the number one thing to think about is that, yeah, you might have unlimited time to train. Let's say you've got three weeks off work, for instance, or you, you're on holiday from uni, et cetera, et cetera. But train for your goals. So like, there's no point doing 30 hour weeks if your race is a 25 mile TT, because yeah, the aerobic part will help you for sure, but it's not that useful. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest things. Um, I think number two is just like build up to it. Like it's quite easy to, to just think, oh, I can just whack 20 hour weeks to begin with. But like, if you look at most people who start to do it, it's like, takes quite a long time. I mean, like when you start riding like 10 hours a week is quite a lot. Um, I can quite comfortably do 20 hour weeks, like three weeks in a row, it's not really an issue. Um, as long as I don't have uni, if I have uni, it's quite hard just because I've got a lot of work to do. Um, and that brings me on to my, I guess my third point is that it depends how much stuff you have to do. Like if you have a full time job, like let's say you're not working at home, like you actually have to go into the office, et cetera, et cetera. Like a 20 hour week is, is very, very hard. Um, if that is your goal. Um, so I think that that is one thing to think about. Like at the moment I'm off uni, I don't have exams in January. So I, you know, I need to do a couple hours of work a day, like three, four hours of work a day is, is all we need to really do. Um, make a YouTube video once in a while and the rest of the time I can just train. So like, if you think about it, like I've actually got so much time. So like four hours of my day to ride a bike isn't really like that much. So I can get away with it quite easily. And also like I had in my year off between uni and school, uh, uni and school, like my gap year, I trained a lot as well. So I'm pretty used to it. So I think that's the biggest thing. But if you are gonna do it and you are gonna commit to it, I think the biggest thing is to realize that like, if you're gonna increase your volume, your intensity doesn't need to increase that much. Like if you look at people like they, they're not suddenly gonna do three days of intensity. You keep the same days of intensity you might add one more rep. So let's say you're doing five times eight minute at VO2 or something, or just over threshold, then you might do six, but you don't need to do like 10. And then the extra bits you just add on, on your like easy, on your easy rides, probably keep the same about an hour. And then on your effort days, you maybe do an hour extra instead of half an hour extra. And then on your endurance rides, do four or five hours instead of maybe three. Um, and I think the results of it, is it worth it? I think, yeah. Um, I made some really big gains in 2019 when I had January, I did like a, 15, 18, 20, and then 24 hour week. Oh no, it might've been more than that. It might've been 22, 24, 26. It was, anyway, it was a lot of work, a lot of volume. And like, it takes a long time to recover, which is the other thing to think about. But I think the biggest thing is that when you do it, you can get from like, you know, you, you do it and you're like, oh yeah, okay, it feels quite tough, feels quite tough. You finish your big volume week, you know, three or four back to back. Then, you know, you have a nice recovery. And like the gains aren't crazy. Cause for me, most of this is just zone two, bare threshold once a week and then tempo once a week. So, you know, nothing crazy. I'm not gonna make massive gains. But what it does is when you start doing VO2, you just go mad. And I made a video about this before in hill climbs. Well, I had a pretty big, big weeks in the summer as well because I was working a job where I got four days off. So on those four days off, I just whack training big time. And like, to be honest, my threshold didn't really increase. It went from like 300 maybe to like 310, something like that. Which, okay, 10 watts sounds quite a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, considering how much I was training and how, like, my threshold used to be 3.30 before I before my crash, etc., it's not, like, it's not crazy increase. But then as soon as I started doing VO2, wow, it was just, like, the gains week on week. I could literally, like, an extra set every week, 10 watts up every week. And that was where I was like, okay, that's why base training is good because it allows you to make the gains. Um, and I'd say one of my other key points is that if you're going to do start doing big volume, don't think, oh, I can just not eat anything. I'll get well lean because that doesn't work. you got to eat a lot. If you don't eat a lot, like this this week I did 21 hours, 23, it says on Training Peaks, including my gym sessions. I burnt 13,000 kilojoules. So if you do that per day, I basically need to eat another like 1,800 calories a day. So, you know, if your base is 2,000 to 1,500, something around there for most people, um, 
well, especially at my weight, then you know, you're gonna be eating three, three and a half thousand, four thousand calories. Obviously, you're bigger, it could be more than that. And four thousand calories a day, it sounds like, yeah, just go Mackey's and just whack some chips and stuff. Nah, 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 nah. That's not what you need. What you need is like a lot of carbs. And if you wanna eat healthy and do 4,000 calories a day, it takes time to get used to that. But um, so yeah, obviously you just need to eat a lot, but also eat a lot on the bike. Like don't think, oh, I just won't eat as much. It's like, nah, even on like three hours easy, um, you still need to eat quite a lot. Cause otherwise like you just get home and it's just not the same and you just won't make the gains and you won't have as much motivation. And then obviously the next part after eating is recovery, which obviously there's a lot of people's, a lot of random techniques um, that people do. Uh, generally for me, our foam roll about two or three times a week. Find that helps quite a lot. That's also trying just my IT band where I broke my left leg is still quite tight. So I'm trying to get rid of that. Um, but I thought I'm not a huge fan. I used to stretch quite a lot, um, but I don't think it actually increased my recovery. It was more for like flexibility. So I'm not, wouldn't say I'm huge about that. Dylan Johnson did a video and he was like, maybe, maybe. Uh, so I'm, I'm unconvinced about that, to be honest. Um, but what I am convinced about is eating a lot of food straight after, like don't like come in, you know, don't clean your bike straight away, just shower, food, done. And then after that, you can relax a bit more. And then sleep is the big thing, like just get enough sleep. Like you might think, oh, I go to bed at like 11 or whatever, but just like try and do half an hour like earlier and then you'll just get used to it. And then slowly, you know, you might be able to go an hour earlier and you might think, oh, it's not that much, but like the earlier you go to bed, even if you wake up earlier as well, so you get the same hours of sleep, you just feel so much better. Um, so I really re recommend just nail, nail to sleep. Um, and I'd say also the other thing is like, just do a bit of gym. Um, like you don't have to put all your hours more in a bike. You can also do more gym stuff, which I think is pretty useful. Uh, but yeah, overall, I don't think most people need to do massive, massive hours, especially if your races aren't that long. Like if you're in the UK and let's say, you know, for most people, the longest race they're gonna do if they're Nat B's are three hours. And maybe if you're doing a Nat, Nat A, which is like the national series, they're four. Like the volume you need to do is decent, but it's not like, mental like you can get away with 15 hour weeks all year and probably still be pretty quick pretty quick um and especially like obviously if you're doing tts or whatever then you don't need that much volume um having said that though volume is good fun like just going out and riding for five hours with your mates like that is fun um so yeah if you have the time definitely do it but i don't think it's uh necessary the most useful thing for everyone to focus on um and i'm not sure yeah it, it, it is the best um use of time uh for certain people but also at the same time if you do it right, you can make some mad gains and who doesn't like just whacking 20 hours on a bike in a week is class. So anyway, cheers for watching. If you've got any more questions about training or anything else, uh, let me know or if you want me to do any more videos. I've got a video coming up that I've been editing but I've just been two days to make it um, about Tour of Antalya last year. My big boy, Max Stenman, won it and um, we're gonna do a video about that because the Tour of Antalya got canceled this year. Um, so I was like, well, I might as well do one. Got his power data because of Hackstrava and all that stuff. So should be a top video. Anyway, cheers for watching. See you in the next one.